ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಜ ವಿಷ್ಣುಪಾದ ಪರಮಂಸ ಪ್ರೀ ಪ್ರಜಾ ಚಿತ್ರಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಅಷ್ಟೋತ್ತರ ಶ್ರೀ ಶ್ರೀ ದಿವಾಯಿ ಶ್ರೀ ಐಸಿ ಭಕ್ತಿ ವೇದಾಂತ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಶಿಲ ಪ್ರಭುಪಾದ ಕಿ ಜಯ ಜಯ ಅನಂತ ಕೋಟಿ ವೈಷ್ಣವ ವೃಂದ ಕಿ ಜಯ ನಮಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಶ್ರೀ ಹರಿದಾಸ್ ಠಾಕೂರ್ ಕಿ ಜಯ ಪ್ರೇಮ್ ಸೇಕೋ ಶ್ರೀ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಪ್ರಭು ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ಶ್ರೀ ಅದ್ವೈತ ಗದಾಧಾರ ಶ್ರೀವಾಸಾದಿ ಗೌರ ಭಕ್ತ ವೃಂದ ಕಿ ಜಯ ಜಯ ಶ್ರೀ ಶ್ರೀ ರಾಧಾ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಗೋಪ ಗೋಪಿ ನಾಥ ಶ್ಯಾಮ ಕುಂಡ ರಾಧಾ ಕುಂಡ ಗಿರಿ ಗೋವರ್ಧನ್ ಕಿ ಜಯ ಜಯ ಮಥುರಾಪುರಿ ಧಾಮ ಕಿ ಜಯ ಜಗನ್ನಾಥ ಪುರಿ ಧಾಮ ಕಿ ಜಯ ಜಯ ಗಂಗಾ ಮಾಯಿ ಜಮುನಾ ಮಾಯಿ ಕಿ ಜಯ ತುಳಸಿ ದೇವಿ ಭಕ್ತಿ ದೇವಿ ಕಿ ಜಯ ಶ್ಯಾಮ ವೇದ ಭಕ್ತ ವೃಂದ ಕಿ ಜಯ ಗೌರ ಪ್ರೇಮಾನಂದೇ ಹರಿ ಹರಿ ಬೋಲ್ ಆಲ್ ಗ್ಲೋರಿ ಟು ಅಸೆಂಬಲ್ ಡಿ ಹೋಟೀಸ್ ಹರಿ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಆಲ್ ಗ್ಲೋರಿ ಟು ಅಸೆಂಬಲ್ ಡಿ ಹೋಟೀಸ್ ಹರಿ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಆಲ್ ಗ್ಲೋರಿ ಟು ಅಸೆಂಬಲ್ ಡಿ ಹೋಟೀಸ್ ಹರಿ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಆಲ್ ಗ್ಲೋರಿ ಇಸ್ ಆಲ್ ಗ್ಲೋರಿ ಇಸ್ ಆಲ್ ಗ್ಲೋರಿ ಟು ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರು ಅಂಡ್ ಶ್ರೀ ಗೌರಂಗ ಹರಿ 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 ನಮಃ ವಿಷ್ಣು ಪಾದಾಯ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಪ್ರಸ್ತಾಯ ಭೂತೇಶ್ವತಿ ಭಕ್ತಿಯಾದಂತ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ನಿತಿ ನಾಮಿನಿ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಸರಸ್ವತಿ ದೇವಿ ಗೌರವ ಪಿಚಾನಿ ದೇವಿ ವಿಶೇಷ ಶುಂಡವಾದಿ ಪಾಶ್ಚಾತ್ಯ ದೇಶ So we are starting today, new chapter, chapter 18, Canto 1, and verse number will be 1 and 2. So this chapter entitled Maharaja Parikshit, Cursed by a Brahman Boy. So I will recite Shlok number 1, three times, and then you can re- repeat it. Sutha Vacha Yove Droni Astra Viplusto Viplusto Namaturu ದರೇಮ ರತ ಅನುಗ್ರಹದ ಭಗವತ ಕೃಷ್ಣಶಾದ್ಭೂತಕರ್ಮಣ ಯೋ ವೇ ದ್ರೋಣ್ಯಸ್ತ್ರ ವಿಪ್ಲುಷ್ಟೋ ನ ಮಾತುರೋ ದರೇ ವ್ರತ ಅನುಗ್ರಹದ ಭಗವತ ಕೃಷ್ಣಶಾದ್ಭೂತಕರ್ಮಣ ಯೋ ವೇ ದ್ರೋಣ್ಯಸ್ತ್ರ ವಿಪ್ಲುಷ್ಟೋ ನ ಮಾತುರೋ ಮಾತುರು ದರೇ ವ್ರತ ಅನುಗ್ರಹದ ಭಗವತ ಕೃಷ್ಣಶ್ಚದ್ಭುತ ಕರ್ಮಣ ಪ್ಲೀಸ್ ರಿಸೈಟ್ ಸೂತ ಉಚ ಯೋ ವೈದ್ರೌಣ್ಯಸ್ತ್ರ ಪ್ಲುಷ್ಟೋ ನ ಮಾತುರ್ ಉದರೇ ಮೃತ ಅನುಗ್ರಹದ ಭಗವತ ಕೃಷ್ಣಸ್ಯದ್ಭುತ ಕರ್ಮಣ ಸೂತ ಉಚ ಯೋ ವೈ ದ್ರೌಣಿ ಅಸ್ತ್ರ ವಿಪ್ಲುಷ್ಟೋ ನ ಮಾತುರ್ ಉದರೇ ಮೃತ ಅನುಗ್ರಹದ ಭಗವತ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಸ್ಯಾದ್ಭುತ ಕರ್ಮಣ anyone else would like to say <clears throat> okay then i'll start thank you ಸೂತಾಚಾಸ್ವಾಮಿ by the weapon of the son of drona the plushta bond by na never matu of the mother udare in the womb mrata met his death anugrahat by the mercy bhagavata of the personality of god at krishna se krishna adbhut karma who act wonderfully translation and purport by his divine grace abhay charnarin bhakti vedanta swami shila purpan Shri Prabhupada ki jai. Jai. Shri Suta Goswami said, due to the mercy of personality of God at Shri Krishna, one who acts wonderfully, 
Maharaj Parikshit, though struck by the weapon of son of Drona in the mother's womb, would not be unborn. Purport by Srila Prabhupada. The sages of Nemisharayan became struck with wonder after hearing about the wonderful administration of Maharaj Parikshit, especially in reference to his punishing the personality of Kali and making him completely unable to do any harm within the kingdom. Sutta Goswami was equally anxious to describe Maharaj Parikshit's wonderful birth and death. And this verse is stated by Sutta Goswami to increase the interest of the sages of Namishara. So we'll take the next verse also. So do you want me to read it? Uh, yeah, Prabhu, yeah, just now like my connection is like, can you read the second verse? Prabhu? Sure. Brahma Kopo Stita Yastu Takshakata Prana Viplavat Nasamu Moho Rubayad Bhagavati Arpita Shayaha. <clears throat> Can anyone else share the screen? I know somehow it's just making all of you like me open another browser. Okay, yes. Uh, this is the second verse uh, for today. Brahma kopo tid Brahma kopo tidad yastu takshakshat prana viplavat na sammohoru bhayad bhagavati arpitashaya synonyms Brahma kopa fury of a Brahmana Uttitta caused by Yaha, who was too, but Takshakshat, Takshaksh, Takshak by the snake bird, Prana Viplavat, from the, from dissolution of life, Na never, Sammu, Sammu, Sammu was overwhelmed, Uru Bhayat, great fear, Bhagavati unto the personality of Godhead, Arpita surrendered, Asheha consciousness. Translation. Furthermore, Maharaj Parichit was always consciously surrendered to the personality of Godhead, and therefore he was neither afraid nor overwhelmed by fear due to a snake bird, which was to bite him because of the fury of a Brahmana boy. Purport. A self-surrendered devotee of the Lord is called Narayan Parayana. Such a person is never afraid of any place or person not even of death. For him, <laughs> nothing is as important as the Supreme Lord and thus he gives equal importance to heaven and hell. He knows well that both heaven and hell are creations of the Lord and similarly life and death are different conditions of existence created by the Lord. But in all conditions and in all circumstances, remembrance of Narayan is essential. The Narayan Parayan practice practice practices this constantly. Maharaj Parishit was such a pure devotee. He was wrongfully cursed by an inexperienced son of Brahmana who was under the influence of Kali. And Maharaj Parishit took this to be sent by Narayan. He knew that Narayan, Lord Krishna, had saved him when he was burned in the womb of his mother. And if he were to be killed by a snake bite, it would also take place by the will of the Lord. The devotee never goes against the will of the Lord. Anything sent by God is a blessing for the devotee. Therefore, Maharaj Parishad was neither afraid of nor bewildered by such things. That is a sign of a pure devotee of the Lord. 
ओम ज्ञानति मृदस्य ज्ञानंजना शलाकाया चक्षुर्मीता मेना तस्म श्री गुरव नम श्री चैतन्य मनोभीष्ट स्थापित येन भूतले स्वयं रूपा कदा मह्यम ददा स्वपदातिगम वंदे अहम श्री गुरो श्रीयुतापदिक श्री गुरून वैष्णव श श्री रूपम साग्र जा सहगण रघुनाथ तम सजीव साध्वैत सवधूत परिजन सहित कृष्चैतन्य दीराधा कृष्ण पादा सहगणित श्री विशाखान्विता हे कृष्ण करुणा सिंधो दीन बंधो जगतपते गोपेश गोपिकांत राधा कांता नमस्ते तप्त कांचन गौरांगी राधे वृंदावनेश्वरी वृषभानु सुते देवी प्रणमा हरि प्रिय वाछा कल्पतरु कृपा सिंधु पतिता पावने वैष्णवीभ्यो नम जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद सूर्यदे तकदाद शिवाशादि गौर भक्त बंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा सो टूडेज वर्स वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट लाइक दिस इज चैप्टर एटीन हेयर इन दिस चैप्टर वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट दर्शित महाराज बींग कस्ट बाय दी दी ब्राह्मणा बॉय शंगी सो दिस पास टाइम इज गोइंग टू कम बट हेयर लाइक वी सी इन द प्रीवियस चैप्टर्स the the activities of parishit maharaj is being described if you go back little back uh, um, in the beginning of the uh, first canto so first three chapters were basically discussing about the first six questions posed by the um, sages of namishran and after that um, sages of namishran they actually asked many questions and one of the questions was like uh, they want to know about the activities of parishit maharaj especially the uh, the birth of the parishit maharaj and what activity parishit maharaj performed because they were very much interested uh, in in the activities of parishit maharaj so in the previous chapter uh, we saw that parishit maharaj actually how parishit maharaj chastised kali so when lord krishna left this material world and went back to his abode कृष्णे सुधाम पगते धर्म ज्ञान देवी सला तनो नष्ट दशमश पुराण को धन विधान सो इन इज मेंशन दैट व्हेन लॉर्ड कृष्णा लेफ्ट दिस मटेरियल वर्ल्ड अलोंग विद लॉर्ड कृष्णा धर्म एंड ज्ञान आल्सो लेफ्ट सो एट दैट टाइम कलियुगा एंटर इनटू दिस मटेरियल वर्ल्ड हियर एंड कलियुगा वाज लुकिंग फॉर प्लेस वेयर टू स्टे एंड ही वाज स्प्रेडिंग इन द ही वाज ट्राइंग टू स्प्रेड इनटू द किंगडम ऑफ परिषद महाराज बट परिषद महाराज चेस्टाइज हिम and he did not allow kali yuga to flourish in his in his uh in his uh, kingdom but because it was a, it was uh it was the will of the lord that kali yuga has to come so parishit maharaj could have killed kali yuga also but he was so powerful but he did not do it is mentioned because kali yuga has a very special quality and what the quality is that if anyone would take the name of lord krishna if anyone would take the lord name of lord hari in this age of kaliyuga they can easily get delivered this is a very wonderful quality if you see in shrimad bhagavatam uh, sukhdev uh, goswami mentioned uh, like in in the 12th canto kale doshe nidhe rajan hasti eko man guna kirtana deva krishna se mukta sang param varje in this age of kaliyuga this this age of kaliyuga is ocean of fault kale doshe nidhe rajan nidhe means the ocean and dosha means the faults this kaliyuga is full of faults this ocean of fault actually so is full of faults in this age of kaliyuga but there is a very wonderful one quality this one quality which supersedes all these faults the quality is that kritna deva krishnasya just by performing the sankirtan yagya of krishna just by performing the by chanting the holy name of krishna one can actually get delivered mukta sangam param varje the person person any human any living entity can actually delivered and they can go back home back to god so because of this wonderful quality parishit maharaj did not kill kali rather he restricted kali to the 
uh, four places and then later he gave one more place so we all discussed that point so when all these sages they he heard about this wonderful qualities of parikshit maharaj so in order to create more inquisitiveness in the uh, like uh, in in all the sages here suta goswami actually mentioned the birth of Kali, uh, parikshit maharaj and how parikshit maharaj actually took the birth so that was mentioned before also but here in this verse <clears throat> uh, suta goswami is saying that due to the mercy of personality of godhead shri krishna who acts wonderfully maharaj parishit though struck by the weapon of son of drona in the womb of ma mother's womb could not be burned so here it's mentioned that like uh, uh, when when uh, pandavas when pandavas are uh, like uh, they chastise drona uh, like drona son ashwatthama so we know uh, if you go back uh, like uh, uh, in the war of mahabharat in the last day of war of mahabharat like when bhima punished uh, duryodhana so after that duryodhana severely injured and he was lying near a lake in the, in the kurukshetra so this uh, uh, ashwatthama along with kripacharya and kritavarma they visited uh, this uh, uh, duryodhana and that and ashwatthama took a vow to kill the uh, uh, the pandavas and in the night they attacked the uh, the camp of pandavas and and ashwatthama was able to kill five sons of draupadi and his brother drishtadumna in the morning when they saw that uh, this ashwatthama actually killed the sleeping uh, five boys of draupadi arjuna took a vow that he is going to bring that uh, culprit uh, in in front of uh, the draupadi so our uh, krishna and arjuna they all got they all they all got called hold of uh, uh, this uh, ashwatthama and they brought so at that time uh, we we saw in the seven, uh, like seventh chapter there was a discussion but ultimately they punished uh, like uh, ashwatthama they took the jewel which was in the in the head of uh, ashwatthama and they and they actually threw him out uh, without any power so ashwatthama was very much <coughs> hurt by this insult because I, I, and to take a revenge he actually thrown a brahmastra weapon on pandava so it is a time when lord krishna was leaving for dwarka after the war of mahabharat and he was on his chariot going so and kunti marani offered the prayer so at that time like before the prayers actually so ashwatthama throwed uh, uh, this uh, brahmastra weapon on five pandavas and one weapon on the in the womb of uttara uh, for parishit maharaj because parishit maharaj is the last a uh, member of the pandava family who was going to be survive so at that time uttara came and beg uh, mercy from lord krishna and we saw like in that chapter that lord krishna immediately at that time first of all he diffuses the five brahmastra weapon which which were coming towards pandavas uh, five pandavas they were basically beat and they saw that weapon and they could not do anything to that weapon but lord krishna through his sudarshan chakra diffused all the five brahmastra and then later he entered himself personally into the womb of uh, of uttara and protected parishit maharaj so this is basically this particular verse is remembering that past time so here uh, suta goswami is saying that due to the mercy of shri krishna who acts wonderfully adbhut karmana this particular uh, uh, qualities of lord krishna is mentioned adbhut karma because lord krishna always perform wonderful activities we see lord krishna lifted the govardhan hill when he was the age of 7 year old prone on his left hand on his pinky finger he actually lifted the hill of govardhana for 7 days and 7 night continuously who can actually perform this kind of wonderful act so that's why a lord is adbhut karma he is perform wonderful activities so uh, uh, suta goswami glorifying lord krishna by this and he is saying that lord krishna protected parikshit maharaj in the womb of his mother that was wonderful act you know like 
how can somebody think about uh, like uh, going to the home and protecting a child so this is this is this is a wonderful act performed by lord krishna because the brahmastra was so unique weapon that it it, it was actually hit the parishit maharaj here is mentioned uh, that uh, though struck by the weapon of son of drona so it was actually like uh, uh, the brahmastra was struck to the uh, to the parishit maharaj but because of the power of lord krishna because of mercy of lord krishna that brahmastra even though it hit parishit maharaj uh, it could not do anything wrong to the parishit maharaj so that's the power so so in the next in the in the next verse actually uh, shila prabhupad mentioned the purport that even though like uh, uh, this uh, parishit maharaj was burned by this uh, power of uh, brahmastra but by the mercy of lord krishna uh, it he actually like uh, uh, could not be killed so this is a uh, like uh, wonderful past times of uh, of uh, this uh, parishit maharaj so here uh, what shila prabhupad bring the point is that when parishit maharaj in this particular chapter we are going to see in the whole chapter in the end parishit maharaj is going to be, uh, going to be cursed by a sage named shringi so because the past time is coming here i am going to give you the summary because ultimately we are going to read the whole chapter <laughs> but you know as as suta goswami created inquisitiveness so i will also create some inquisitive net for all of you so that we can actually stick to this chapter very nicely so because it's a summary of this chapter actually what uh, uh, what suta goswami is saying because after this all the sages is going to ask the question they want more detailed information so we do, today we are going to give the summary of the information so one day prashid maharaj was basically uh, like uh, uh, roaming around in his kingdom and then later uh, he was going in a forest for uh, for some administrative work so then while in the forest he got separated from his convoy because they were all ministers and all other uh, soldiers they were all along with prashid maharaj and he was going in the forest and they got separated prashid Ma prashid maharaj was alone on that day uh, some uh, some or other and he was he went into the forest uh, deep and he he became suddenly he became very thirsty and hungry suddenly normally this would have not happened to prashid maharaj but our our acharyas explain that it is all mercy of krishna actually normally it doesn't happen you know like prashid maharaj how can uh, prashid maharaj who is like a, such a uh, like a staunch devotee has suddenly become so much hungry and thirsty right but on that day he was really feeling very hungry and thirsty and then while searching for water uh, and food he was looking for uh, uh, some place and ultimately he came to the uh, uh, like uh, this house of uh, samikrishi there was a sage named samikrishi and he has a cottage and he saw there is a ashram of samikrishi and he entered into the ashram and in the ashram samikrishi was sitting there and he was uh, it's mentioned in bhagavatam that he was in a samadhi he was in a uh, like a uh, trance and his his external senses were completely gone he was all gone internally and he was he could not see what he could not hear what's going outside so at that time parishit maharaj he saw that oh this sage is sitting in a, in like and then he he was very thirsty and hungry and very tired also so with with his loud voice uh, with his loud voice to his capacity he asked for water he said give me water but because as 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 we as we see that samikrishi was always in a uh, he, he was he was already in a trance he could not hear what parishit maharaj was asking for so parishit maharaj tried on one more time please give me some water but samikrishi could not he did not reply and he asked ask again he did not reply so samikrishi like parishit maharaj uh, he was very tired hungry and he thought this is even though he's a sage but i am his guest i am his guest atithi dev bhava like i am his guest why he is ignoring me he thought some just a moment for just a small fraction of a moment he got that idea that this sage is actually intentionally ignoring me just for a moment actually it was not really like a, a parishit maharaj thought but 
sometimes we, we get a thought you know like the, like some uh, uh, some uh, other thought so so Parishan maharaj thought oh maybe he might be ignoring me so then he say oh if this guy is ignoring me i will punish him because i am the king of, uh, of of the state and he's he's not following the rules of uh, um, taking care of the guests so he could not get the water so while he's going back he coming out from the uh, from the ashram then while coming out he saw a dead snake on the ground so from his bow he took the dead snake <clears throat> and then he took the dead snake and he put it in the around the neck of samikrishi and then from there is left so when he left there uh, there was uh, like some uh, some small boys they were playing there a little far and they saw that this one king actually entered his ashram and then he put a snake around the neck of Samikrishi and then he left. So they thought, oh, let, let's go and tell Shrangi. Shrangi, who is the son of uh, Samikrishi. So they, uh, Shrangi was taking bath in a Kaushiki river, so which was nearby. He was taking bath in a Kaushiki river. So they all went and they say, hey, Shrangi, uh, they, were, they were friends. Huh? They say, hey, Shrangi, you know, your father is dead now. You know, one king came and he he actually throwed uh, he put the snake in your father's uh, body and your father is dead now shrangi because he was just a small uh, like boy like he was just 7 year old he did not realize what is correct or what is wrong uh, what is not correct without even giving second thought he took the water from the river and he actually cursed parishit maharaj so there is a good uh, discussion actually shrangi will go see in this chapter what shrangi actually said he gave his own argument actually, which was not correct, but we'll see that what argument he gave later in the chapter. But he took the water of Koshki river and he cursed that that king who actually put the snake in my father's uh, body, he will be killed after seven days by the great uh, snake bird called Takshaka. Immediately he gave the curse without even thinking. And then after that, he came back to the ashrama and when he saw his father in the like sitting there so he started crying very loudly so then because of this loudly crying his father's uh, trance broke and and he came uh, into the external consciousness and he took the shrangi on his lap and he asked like what happened why are you crying then shrangi told that i thought you uh, you died because of uh, the snake uh, then then uh, uh, then uh, samik samik rishi asked like Okay, exactly what happened. Then he told the whole story, and he told that actually I uh, gave curse to the uh, to this Parishit. Oh, the Samikrishi actually like become very very uh, you know uh, unhappy by the act of his son. So, but now the word of Brahmana is so powerful that it cannot be taken back. You know, so the curse was already given. So Samikrishi he himself know that this nobody can actually take this curse back. So, but he actually told like before this uh, this curse going to take effect let me go and inform Parishit Maharaj about this so Samikrishi sent one messenger to Parishit Maharaj so Parishit Maharaj while coming back to his kingdom uh, there was a uh, there was a good discussion actually we can go in the chapter we'll see that so when Parishit Maharaj uh, like came back to his uh, his palace so at that time uh, this messenger came and told Parishit Maharaj that uh, my dear sir, uh, like uh, Samikrishi's son, Srangi actually give you curse and after seven days you will be uh, killed by a snake bite, Takshaka. So somebody would have said that by that curse, uh, Parshit Maharaj would have got scared, you know, because, you know, if somebody comes and tells you you are going to die within a few days, what's, going to, what's our reaction will be. But Parshit Maharaj, he thought, oh, God, oh that's good. He actually appreciated say that's actually I have inserted a Brahmana, whatever happened is good for. So it is the law, it is the will of the Lord. So he immediately, he immediately he could have retaliated, he could have challenged this uh, curse of a Brahmana. So he could have asked Lord Krishna for help to neutralize this uh, Brahma, uh, this, uh, uh, this curse of a Brahmana. Because see, if we see when he was in the womb of his mother, he was protected by Brahmastra, which is again Brahm, uh, Brahm power, right? 
So similarly, this Brahma, this uh, Brahmana curse is also powerful. So he could have asked Lord Krishna for help and Lord Krishna would have protected him from that, right? So at that time when he was in the womb of his mother, he did not ask for prayer. He did not offer prayer for Krishna for help, but he was protected by Krishna. So here also Krishna could have protected him, right? But he did not, he did not want to do that. This is the sign of a pure devotee. You know? So that's what Prabhupada mentioned in the purport that whether a person, whether a devotee is in a happy condition, whether the devotee is in a some difficult condition. So when devotees are put into difficulty, even though they took all difficulty as the mercy of the Lord. This curse that is given to Parshit Maharaj, Parshit Maharaj could have retaliated. Actually, it's mentioned in Mahabharat that one sage came to Parshit Maharaj and he told that I know a special, uh, a special magic through which no snake can come near you. I can do that magic that Takshaka will not able to come and bite you at all. And, and Prashid Maharaj himself was very powerful actually. If we see uh, in the Mahabharat, Arjuna, his grandfather, actually uh, 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 defeated Takshaka many times. And and uh, and he actually uh, uh, like uh, uh, forgive Patakshaka for his uh, for uh, uh, fighting against him. He defeated him, but he gave him like uh, uh, the life back. So this uh, uh, Parishit Maharaj was also capable of doing that same thing. He could have like uh, protected himself from Takshaka very easily, and but he did not do that. He took this curse as a will of the Lord, and. Rather than fighting and protecting his life, he decided that for next seven days, he is going to dedicate his life in the service of Krishna. So as soon as he heard that that he uh, he got cursed by his Shrangi for seven days, after seven days he is going to die, he immediately gave up his house. He immediately made his son Janmeja as a king of the state. He gave up all his clothing, all his ornament. He took uh, like uh, he he just came out from his kingdom, came near the uh, bank of Ganga, and he sat down there and started doing Amran Anshan. Amran Anshan means like uh, he decided not to eat and not to drink till he died. You know, he was so uh, dedicated. You know, so he decided that, and we know that when he came out, this this news spread like a fire all over the universe. That Maharaj Parikshit was cursed by Shrangi for after seven days that he is going to die by the snake bite. So because of that uh, news spread all over the world, all these great sages, all these great people, they start coming where the Parikshit Maharaj was sitting. They all came. Many it's mentioned in Bhagavatam that so many great sages, including Narad Muni, Bhagwan Prashuram, Atri, Vasist, uh, Chavan, so many people. Uh, all those people, they all came uh, at, at the bank of Ganga where Parishit Maharaj was sitting. And when Parishit Maharaj saw all these great sages, they all came. He became very happy to see that all of them and he welcomed everyone. He welcomed everyone and he offered obeisances to all the sages. And he asked this question to, to all the sages that, please tell me, please tell me what is my duty right now. I'm, I, I, I have been cursed by Sharangi that after seven days, I'm going to die. I have only seven days left. What should I do? What can I do right now? What is my duty? You are all great sages. You, you have studied Shastra. You know I've, uh, the, uh, the uh, secret of life and death. Tell me what is my duty. And also tell me what is the duty of, of all other people. Because there are people who are, who are going to, uh, who are here, who are not going to die uh, in seven days, but they are, they are here. So what is the duty of a people in general and what is the duty of a person who is about to die? Tell me what should I do? So they were all the sages. They were all discussing uh, what should we do? What should we do? Uh, so they were all chit-chatting. They were not coming to any conclusion. Somebody was saying that he should perform dana. He should perform charity. Somebody saying he should go to the holy place. Someone saying he should actually perform yajna. Somebody saying he should, he should read shastra. Somebody saying something, somebody saying something. But the later Prakshad Maharaj says that actually 
I want to hear the pastimes of Lord Krishna. That is my desire. But rest up to you what you want to do. But this is my desire. I want to hear the pastimes of Lord Krishna. So suddenly at that time, it's mentioned, Yadrichya, that uh, by the mercy of the Lord, Sukhdev Goswami, he was roaming around on the earth and he suddenly appeared there. That's the next chapter actually. So Sukhdev Goswami appeared there and when Sukhdev Goswami came, all the sages, they welcomed Sukhdev Goswami and Prashid Maharaj also welcomed Sukhdev Goswami and he gave him a very nice Vyasasana and he, uh, and he offered him the uh, uh, obeisances and he asked the same question to Sukhdev Goswami. What is the duty of a person who is about to die? And what is the duty of a person in all circumstances? And also he asked other questions like what to hear, what to chant, what to worship and what to remember. And also what not to hear, what not to chant, what not to remember, and what not to worship. Totally asked all these questions. And then this is the basis of Srimad Bhagavatam. These questions of by the Parishit Maharaj are the basis of Srimad Bhagavatam that Sukhdev Goswami is going to answer. But the but here in this, uh, like I, I just created increasing that for all of you. <laughs> What's going to come in next two chapters? Just a summary. But the whole point is that that Parshit Maharaj exemplified and he showed the uh, the character of a pure devotee. Prabhupada mentioned that this is a uh, this is a uh, the characteristic of pure devotee that in all circumstances they are never afraid. They are they are not scared of any situation, whether they are in they are in a good state or or in a difficult state. They are always remembering Krishna. Parishit Maharaj also said that I want to I want to hear the past tense of Krishna. Devotees are always engaged in Krishna consciousness. They are always thinking about Krishna. The another example we can see the example of Prahlad Maharaj. The now nursing Chaturdashi is coming, so we are going to hear the past tense of Prahlad Maharaj. So Prahlad Maharaj he was a pure devotee by birth. When he was in the womb of his mother, same thing, see, like Parishad Maharaj was also in the womb of the mother, he saw the direct darshan of Lord Krishna. He saw Lord Krishna in the womb of his mother. Uh, and when he came out from the womb of his mother, he was looking for Krishna all the time. That's why his name was Parikshit. He was examining everyone. Who is Krishna? Who is that personality who saved me in the womb, womb of my mother? Who is that personality? He was looking always for Krishna. That is a pure devotee's nature. They are always looking for Krishna. So Parishit, uh, Prahlad Maharaj. So Prahlad Maharaj, he was instructed by Narad Muni while he was in the womb of his mother. And he became pure devotee. And he was always remembering Krishna. Always. And Hrinda Kashipu told him not to remember Krishna, not to remember Vishnu. Say, you should worship me, not Vishnu. But Prahlad Maharaj said, no, my, my dear father, Lord Vishnu is the supreme personality of Godhead. And he is the he is the powerful. Through his power, we all get the powers. You also get the power from Lord Vishnu. I also get the power from Lord Vishnu. We are all basically part and parcel of Lord Vishnu. But you know this, Hirinda <laughs> uh, Kashipu did not uh, like get this idea. So Hirinda Kashipu decided to kill Parishit Maharaj, uh, this Prahlad Maharaj. And we hear in Shrimad Bhagavatam seventh canto that Hirinda Kashipu tried many many ways. By putting Prahlad Maharaj, throwing from, uh, from the mountain, throwing in the ocean, putting in the fire, throwing under the, uh, under the feet of uh, elephants, uh, like putting in a, like, uh, like uh, in, uh, in front of snakes, so many things. And he tried many, many times. He tried. All the time when he was trying, Parshit Maharaj was uh, Prahlad Maharaj was unaffected. He was completely protected by the Lord. Because he was always remembering Krishna. It is mentioned in 7th canto that he could not even touch the body of Prahlad Maharaj because Prahlad Maharaj was a pure devotee. He was, he was not a sinful person. Normally, a person dies prematurely or get, get punished because of the sinful reaction. But Parishit Maharaj, like Prahlad Maharaj, he was a pure, he was a pure devotee. He could not, like uh, Hirinakashipu, all methods could not even touch Prahlad Maharaj at all. And Prahlad Maharaj was not at all scared. You know, after trying all these methods, they ultimately brought, uh, the, the, uh, the soldiers of Hirinakashipu brought Prahlad Maharaj in front of Hirinakashipu and told, 
we could not kill him <laughs> my lord he, he somebody else is protecting him we could not kill him it's it's very difficult to kill him so we he, they gave up they gave up say we, we could not kill him and then actually like you know this um, hinne kashipu he became very scared of prahlad he became very scared he thought you know if somebody do this kind of action against a normal person a normal human being right either that person will get scared or this person will get run away from uh, from his home or some place but this prahlad maharaj he is not at all scared he is not running from here and he is smiling in front of me <laughs> hinda kashipu like he is trying so many method but prahlad maharaj was not at all affected at all he was smiling and he was standing in front of his father and not running anywhere it's just he was fearless fearless prahlad maharaj was fearless because he was fearless because he is constant remembrance of krishna he is an example like prahlad maharaj gave nine prasad devotional service shravanam kirtanam vishnu smaranam pada sevanam archanam vandanam dasyam sakyam atmanivedanam in that prahlad maharaj exemplified the process of smaranam or remembrance so he was remembering krishna all the time that's the reason that even all the weapons all the tricks whatever hinde kashipu try to kill prahlad maharaj could not even touch prahlad maharaj so that is a sign of pure devotee also we can see example of even uh, shila prabhupad when shila prabhupad came here like we saw in 1965 when he came to the united state he gone through so many tribulations so many problems he gone through but he was undisturbed in his mission he came with a mission to preach krishna consciousness in the western world and he was so determined that even though so many problems he gone through even he got two heart attacks on the ship but even those heart attack could not disturb or could not deviate shila purpad from his mission and shila purpad always say that krishna is with me he shila purpad always remembered krishna and in all circumstances he was always remembering krishna and he was always saying that you know we all doing this for krishna so that is a sign of pure devotee like even in in whatever situation they are they are completely dependent and surrender to krishna so this is the one of the quality that actually makes a devotee narayan parayan this particular word what uh, shila purvad mentioned in the purport this narayan parayan means always dependent upon the mercy of the lord because we all have like some powers we have a bodily powers we have uh financial powers we have uh um, like family power or all other things are there but if we depend upon anything else other than krishna then that might not protect us but krishna is a sure sure method which protects us in 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 bhagavad gita krishna has given this assurity many times ananya chintayanto mam ye jana puripasate tesham nitya viktanam yoga kshema vahamya Krishna said in Bhagavad Gita chapter nine, text number twenty-two, Ananya chintayanto mam ye jana puripas. Anyone who remember with me Ananya bhav, completely surrender unto me. The if they just remember me constantly, I will protect what they have and I will preserve. Uh, I will provide what they need. So this is the assurance of Krishna. And also Krishna mentioned that prati jani hi konte naam e bhakta panishati. O Krishna, O Arjuna, do you boldly declare? my devotee never perishes my devotee never perishes and also krishna mentioned that sarv dharman pratajya mam ekam shanam varga am tvam sar pape bhyo moksha shami masucha so krishna said that that sarv dharman give up all variety of religion just surrender unto me and i will protect you from all varieties of all types of sinful reactions so when when we get we get protection from the all sinful reactions and definitely we are all protected that's krishna's protection so krishna actually gives so many places this guarantee that uh, i'll protect my devotee so this particular past times of parishit maharaj gave us so much assurance that any dev- devotee who is narayan parayan who is always remembering krishna all the time being protected by krishna all the circumstances even though sometime we see difficulty in our life sometime things become very very difficult but if you remember krishna the, the, the devotees can easily uh, 
uh, uh, take care of that situation. Even the situation become very difficult. So that's why like we see the example of Parishit Maharaj, we see example of Prahlad Maharaj, we see example of Srila Prabhupada. These are the great example of pure devotees who actually gone through so much trouble. But even after going through so much trouble, they never give up remembering Krishna. They always remember Krishna. They always surrender to Krishna and they always wait for Krishna's mercy. So that's a great uh, uh, characteristic of the devotees. So uh, I'll stop here and see if there is anyone have any comment or questions uh, regarding today's discussion. Or if you while if you would like to share your realization, you know all of us. Uh, at least I'm I'm sure like uh, uh, all of us have some realization, not not all the time, but we all have some realization that Krishna protects us or Krishna is like uh, uh, interfering in our life and taking care of our situations. You know. So if you would like to share anything uh, from your personal experience, please share. It's a nice, nice uh, class. And uh, yes, Parikshit Maharaj, you know, he, whatever he went through, that's a big lesson for us too. So, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Yeah, that they uh, say, whatever he went through, you know, all those things you just summarize now, how he was saved and what he was questioning, you know, who saved him. That's why he got his Parikshit Mahaparik's name. <laughs> and uh, th uh, that was a realization you know, whenever we chant the, chant the name of the Lord, I, I felt that relief and that gets the answer for me all the time. That is, a, I, that I always have the experience. And the chanting makes me so easy to come across whatever I feel, I feel. So that, that's what my experience is. And uh, here, you know, Parishit Maharaj is the one and Prahlad Maharaj is the examples for us, you know, how they did and how he saved. Lord saved them. That is terrible, you know, that's how he is protecting. He, that, that, there's a lesson for us, so he protects all the time. That's what I felt. That's how, thank you. Thank you, Matai. Thank you for sharing. Thank you very much, Prabhu, for nice class and a lot of like uh, stories, not stories actually, but from Bhagavatam, you know, about Prahlad Maharaj and uh, also Parikshit Maharaj, you know, how they were saved by the Supreme Lord. So I also had many, many experiences like that in the life, you know, if we, if we think, you know, how, why this thing happened in this particular way, and uh, it could have been much worse, you know. So, so Krishna actually protects us. We don't sometimes think, you know, we said it just happened, you know, but it doesn't happen like that, you know, because everything happens by Krishna's will only. Like uh, several months ago, I was just going to temple and in the way on German Town Pike, actually, I completely slept while driving. I was sleeping at, at the light, you know, light became red, you know, and I just fell asleep. And after that, my wife said, go. So I just go going ahead, you know, without seeing here and there and without realizing I was still sleeping and I was driving, you know, for a few seconds, you know, and then my wife just like touched my body, you know, and she said, what are you doing? So suddenly I opened my eyes because one car was coming right in front of me and suddenly I stopped. So I, this Krishna's will, you know, actually that I was awoke, but my wife was looking at me. Otherwise, you know, it will not happen. And uh, that what I was doing, so I could have been like have a bad accident or something, you know, but so many, many times this happens in our life, you know, and everything Krishna actually takes care, but we think that I took care of. So that's a Kartaha Miti Manyate, that's a same thing actually. So we should actually thank Lord and we should be very appreciative of the Supreme Lord of what he's giving us and what he's doing for us, you know, and that's why, you know, we should always remember him. Thank you, Prabhu Hare Krishna. Thank you. Thank you, Prabhuji, for sharing your personal realization. You know, I just, this personal realization is very, very wonderful, you know, like, especially like I always inspired from Srila uh, personal experience. 
you know shila gurpa's personal life experience what he gone through uh, like even though he gone through so many tribulations as i say like so many problems especially first year of his stay in the united states he gone through so many problems when i first heard that i like it was like heart wrenching you know how can a person at the age of 70 can go through this kind of problems and still so determined to do uh, do the service to the lord you know so that's a sign of pure devotee and you know like we have to basically like uh, thank shila purpad for giving us such a wonderful organization such a wonderful opportunity for all of us to grow in this uh, this movement and especially like shila purpad gave us this uh, wonderful uh, uh, shrimad bhagavatam so parikshit maharaj when when he asked this question so answer given by sukhde goswami is what actually shila purpad mentioned the purport you know एतावान सांख्यो ज्ञाभ्याम स्वाधर्मा परिनिष्ठिया जन्म लाभा परापमसाम अंते नारायण स्मृति सुखदेव गोस्वामी सेड दैट लाइक यू नो सो ए द कल्मिनेशन ऑफ एवरीथिंग इवन दो वेदर सांख्य योगा और स्वाधर्मा मींस लाइक डूइंग योर प्रिस्क्राइब ड्यूटी और ज्ञान योगा और भक्ति योगा एवरीथिंग द कल्मिनेशन इज अंते नारायण स्मृति वी शुड रिमेंबर कृष्णा फॉर इन कंक्लूजन at the end of our life in conclusion we should remember krishna and always remember krishna never forget krishna this is a principle and that's what uh, shila purpad uh, emphasized in this purport is that devotees are always under the shelter of the lord we should not we should not take any other shelter except the lord because lord is the only protector lord is our only the shelter and even i remember like uh, in one of the uh, bhagavatam lecture uh, i heard from my guru maharaj that whenever you are in trouble you know, he always says that whenever you are in trouble you should always take shelter of the lord because lord is the real protector even though you get protection from some other people or some other other place but ultimately is the lord who is protecting lord is a real uh, protector and he he will protect you he will protect you in all circumstances lord is available everywhere past present and future is not that lord is like uh, some some person might be today might not be tomorrow or maybe maybe here or may may not be there but ultimately lord is everywhere lord can protect us like while we are in jungle while we are in home while we are in car while we are in office while we, wherever we are just remember krishna and that he will protect you so that's the point here thank you prabhu thank you for sharing uh, i see couple of uh, hands raises kalpesh prabhu would like to share something hari krishna prabhu ji hari krishna please accept my humble obeisances uh, thank you very much for a good class <clears throat> so i like uh, the part which you said uh, uh, look at the examples of uh, different uh, shri la prabhupad is uh, the most recent one um, so we should always remember it's very tough though when we, when we are in that situation we, we it's not easy to remember that way but that that is the like we keep on reminding ourselves so uh, like after i started uh, associating here and i i realize um through bhagavad gita's knowledge and through senior devotees um most of uh, uh, most of the troubles uh, uh, in my my way uh, of looking at things at my own thing uh, is due to uh, creating reactions uh, to the situation and um, and and the const- and in that reaction mode uh, the mind is uh, having uh, if we can remove from mind about uh, complaining criticizing uh, uh, and comparing uh, and uh, judging if these four things can be removed from the mind then i think so lot of the arguments which are going uh, will probably stop uh, that is if if any any words we speak uh, uh, if if there is a complaint if there is a criticize uh, if there is a comparison to something uh, and uh, and judging if four things are in the mind uh, always in the uh, translation into the words and actions uh then uh, then then there is a likelihood that there will be a reaction uh, to that uh 
but again, uh, the principle is to remember Krishna, seeing the will in everything, uh, that we are not the doer. We are not only the doer for this. So that is what I, uh, I, I, I'm experiencing. And when I try to not do this, uh, then I probably, it doesn't mean that problem goes away. It just means that uh, I am peace. I'm at peace at that time. So that is my realization. I, I, I mean, it's easy to say, but I still, um, I still do it. After knowing this also, somehow accidentally I get into this mode. Uh, knowing this is not the right thing. And doing this, this is what is not helping me also. But still, I keep on doing it because the forgetfulness uh, which I'm, I'm, I'm having it for this knowledge and not, uh, not able to probably, maybe not taking proper shelter to Krishna. That is the also reason. So that, that is my realization. Prabhuji, I wanted to ask like, because we, we try to propagate this knowledge of Krishna consciousness. So this is my question. Um, if, if, when we are interacting with others uh, and try to share this knowledge, uh, and and we, we are trying to find we want to really help first ourselves definitely but we want to also have that compassion to help others uh, just so that that divine so the, the other soul also gets the this divine knowledge in in that intention when we try to do things um what 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 do you think that what is the real problem of this society why they are not able to take it to the Krishna consciousness where, where all the value systems, character building, all are like very good, you know. Uh, why, I, I, I really never understood this in my thing. Why would people not uh, seek for good things, you know, uh, uh, good morals at least, you know, not in the spiritual principle wise, but why would people not really? So what, what could be the roots root of it? If you have to catch somebody in the interaction, if I have to I am trying to find what is the root of like why he would not take it in general way. I know there may be a varieties in this, but still, if we have to catch the root, when we catch the root of it, probably uh, transformation is possible. Yeah, yeah. Do, no, you, no. do you know like what, yes. what could be it? Yes, yes, yes. Prabhu. Like you, are, what, you, you, thank you very much. First of all, for sharing such a nice realization. You know, this this realization of the devotees are our our really assets for our us for all of us because when we share realization with each other this is actually inspires us so much so thank you very much for sharing your realization and regarding your question uh, so so the fundamental problem is the root cause as you said like what is the root cause of people not being uh, taking this uh, krishna consciousness or becoming god conscious the fundamental uh, issue, what our Shastra, our, our scriptures explain, Srila Jiva Goswami explains that the fundamental problem while living in today is not, uh, like suffering the material world here and not really coming to the God is because their forgetfulness. The rem they, because we forget Krishna and because of that, because we forget Krishna for so many time immemorial, Srila Prabhupada used this word time immemorial, from long, long time, we have, we are forgotten Krishna. And because of that, this Maya captured us. Because we forget Krishna, this Maya is actually acting on us. And because of the Maya, the very first thing that happened is that we forget our own identity. Our own identity means like we forget who we are in reality. So as you say, like, what is the, how we can bring them to Krishna consciousness? So fundamental thing is that first of all, we need, we need to provide them a way to remember Krishna, first of all. That's the most, most important thing. How can we give them Krishna? So this, that's why Srila Purpad, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in, inaugurated this Sankirtan movement. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's order is that we should go every town and village and chant Hare Krishna. So means what does that mean is that when we introduce Hare Krishna Mahamantra to general public, so they will, as soon as they, they will hear, forget about chanting, as soon as they hear this word Krishna enter into their ear, 
and enter into the heart of, heart of them and then they will basically get purified so this 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 chanting of holy name this this sankirtan movement has to go every town and village that is the first duty of a devotee so when we come to krishna consciousness it is it is our first duty because what chaitanya mahaprabhu says that to spread this sankirtan movement we have to spread this holy name to every town and village so when this holy name is heard by non devotees or even anyone so like one time chaitanya mahaprabhu ask like you know uh, this uh, uh, haridas thakur you know like this living and the human being they can chant hare krishna and they can get delivered what about this trees the plants and all these living entities so that time haridas thakur said that by law when when devotees are going to perform loud chanting of hare krishna maha mantra on the streets on the on, 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 in in the forest on the on the road everywhere when we do loud chanting of holy name this holy name will work we don't need to do anything this krishna this word will enter in the heart of the living entity to the ears and then purify so that's a whole idea this is the way we can give them krishna even though they don't want <laughs> even though they don't want we can give them krishna that way that's the first thing and as if you take from bhagavad gita so the root problem is that we we think that we are the body prapa says that the very first problem that we have that we think that we are the body the right and in in and and in reality we are not the body so this knowledge has to go so these two things has to go like one is krishna the name of krishna they have to go either through their ears or through their tongue whatever the way we have either they chant the holy name or they hear the holy name no that's why you see our temples our fundamental the, the fundamental job of our temple is to give facility for all the people to chant hare krishna so that's why the why we have built why shila purpad gave so many temples and all temples are not just not just basically some kind of center it's a it's a place where everybody can come and hear krishna's name chant krishna's name worship krishna honor krishna prasadam all these things are basically these are different ways to give krishna to others so that's why purpad actually also introduced going out and doing sankirtan like doing book distribution and sankirtan or chanting holy name of the lord the same thing go out and distribute prasadam to give krishna to other people so even though they don't want we have to give see because the age of kaliyuga they are basically like uh, affected by the maya they forget krishna so we first of all we have to give them facility so that they can remember krishna they can hear krishna's name they can get mercy of krishna so once they get it then they will realize because they they have not tasted they have not tasted this holy name that's why they are not getting attracted by this see unless see if i tell you gulab jamun is a very nice sweet dish uh, but why they are not eating because they never tasted you know if they are if there is some if some uh, somebody is eating filthy food not really like uh, uh, they are not asking gulab jamun because they never tasted so we as a devotee it is our duty my guru maharaj always says that you know all the devotees in krishna consciousness should have only one task how to spread this krishna conscious movement how to spread this 24 by 7 we have to think we have to think we should not think about our own uh, take, uh, like uh, daily affairs because that will be taken care by krishna how we are going to survive what we are going to do how the things will happen from where the money will come how the that is taken care by krishna krishna will take care but our own only duty should be how should we spread this movement how should we give krishna to other this we have to think about and in that we have to basically spread this movement in such a way that we should give krishna to other so because they never heard krishna they never tasted krishna's holy name they never tasted krishna prasadam you know one time one devotee if one person come one time our temple and they taste tasty krishna prasadam i can tell you they will always remember they will remember whole life they will remember whole life that they one time came to iskon hari uh, like a temple and they tasted a nice full plate of prasadam huh? and the more tasty prasadam will give them that will make a permanent effect in their heart and they will come back one time they will take Prash- krishna prasadam that as a effect so the whole point is that we have to give them krishna because they are forget they forget krishna right from the Uh, beginning, they are suffering the material world. 
once we introduce, then they will basically take. So that's why they are not taking because they never get introduced. But as we are, as you are saying that we are going out and distributing. So slowly, slowly, sometimes it takes time. You know, it might not happen that overnight that we give them something today and tomorrow they will become pure devotee. It's not, it might not happen because Prabhupada says that, you know, this contamination, this material contamination is layer after layer is on our heart. That's why Chaitanya Mahaprabhu give this uh, Hare Krishna mantra and told this Cheto Darpan Marjanam. When we keep chanting Hare Krishna mantra because we are not chanting pure holy name, that's why it takes long time. But if we start chanting holy name purely, then it can effect can happen magically. So that we have to do it. So uh, giving this Bhagavad Gita, this this uh, this philosophy that we are not the body, we are the spirit soul, and chanting and giving this Hare Krishna Mahamantra and distributing prasadam, these are three. These are the basic techniques we can actually do. What Shri Prabhupada gave us through which we can actually spread this movement very easily. So that's my point, Prabhu. Like, you know, I don't know, like, is, is that answer your question or not? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, it helps a lot because I, I, I in my experience also, many times I interact and they, they recall the, that, yeah, I went to the Iskand temple and the prasadam was very, very nice. So it was sitting in their heart, as you are yes. saying, <laughs> which, and which is very, very right. So more, more uh, the delicious uh, prasadam will be, it will make a permanent effect. I completely I cannot disagree because I have heard so many times this, so many times, you know, they, they are very like, they appreciate a lot. Uh, even the Kirtan, they appreciate a lot. No, if you go out, if you go out on some Kirtan, people will ask cookies, you know. <laughs> Devotees used to pass a lot of prasadam. They always ask, hey, where is the prasadam? <laughs> So like we like all the Sankirtan devotees should take some prasadam with them. That's that's the whole idea because that's everybody appreciates. You know? so. yeah. Thank you very much, Prabhuji. Uh, Hare Krishna. Uh, we have one more hand raised by uh, Mukti Dhatri Madhi Mataji. Hare Krishna, Prabhu Dandatma. Hare Krishna, Mataji. Uh, uh, I have the similar story like uh, Koibolo Prabhu was sharing. So like uh, for my Prabhuji, he like uh, one and a half year ago, Prabhu. So mm -hmm. he was coming from the work. And that time, uh, that time, like he was in green light. So he's supposed to come in, coming like straight. And the other car, I don't know, they might, uh, might be stopping because when the straight uh, car is going, the other side should be stopped. But the guy who hit the car, he was not stopping. Maybe I don't know. He came like uh, so fast and hit uh, my Prabhu's car and the car go through the like go up in the sky for rolling for three times and that time he was only said like uh, first time I was not understanding what happening and then he realized the the car is hit by another car and then he suddenly said join Ishino there and uh, close his eyes. And then after he was hearing from the phone, the music plays, he didn't even touch the phone, but uh, the music plays like Hare Krishna Mahamantra. And then uh, after like some some second, he was not like in conscious uh, what happening. Then after the car stopped and the whole like four wheels were up and mm -hmm. uh, upside down, the car was upside down. Uh, he was not supposed to be light actually. And then uh, suddenly he opened his eyes and see he was in the back seat somehow. I think like the Lord like uh, protect him uh, because of his remembering Lord Nishingo there. And he was, uh, didn't even touch by anything. The ca whole car was broken. Uh, he's gone like to the trash. But he was somehow like saved by Lord Nishingo there uh, for us and his life now with us and uh, he is nothing happened after like some people came and pull him out from the uh, from the back uh, glass it was broken like totally broken so he was realizing like uh, if he like if he even dies that's why maybe krishna like plays the music hare krishna so he can at least hear and die even though he didn't touch the phone it was like Magically, like playing. So after that, he was like saying everything like to us. 
So that was the story, Prabhu. And uh, I have another question, Prabhu. Like, Parikshit Maharaj, how long he wrote the, uh, like, kingdom? I don't know that. In, if you can, like, tell me the, how long he was ruling the kingdom. Yeah. Thank you, Mataji, first of all, sharing, you know, such a, like, uh, you, I didn't, I didn't know about that, like, my Prabhu actually gone through this severe accident, but actually, like, you know, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm really, like, uh, happy that, uh, like, he, like, Lord protected him such a nice way, you know, like, even though generally, uh, what you mentioned is, is, is very severe accident, like, yes, when this happened yes. on the car he hold. was in hospital for three days, but he has little concussion, and uh, after that, he was okay. And the doctor cancelled the license for him for three months because he's saying like my some like head is like I don't uh, sometimes rooming so the doctor like they just cancel his license for three months suspended <laughs> but oh, he I was know, not like, in guilty <laughs> yeah no I some, know like this yeah is, this is a special mercy of, on the devotee you know but like that's actually proves like you know like uh, our point is. When she, when when she, uh, when we remember Krishna, Krishna definitely comes and protects. And and this is this is a very nice inspiration, you know, for all of us to basically remember that Prabhuji is like you know like uh, uh, this example inspires us so much that uh, like he was protected by Narsingha. You know, this is very very nice, Mata. You know, wonderful. Yes, Prabhu. Thank you. So re regarding your question, like um, I'm not sure, but I think like uh, uh, what I. Uh, see is like I think he ruled for 36 years uh, but I can confirm that like I think if uh, like uh, um, that's my understanding but maybe anyone else might know like they might have heard like I, I think he he ruled the kingdom for 36 years he was very uh, like very prematurely like uh, left the body he was very young at the time so but I can check again and, and let you know what okay. Okay. This, this, this Mataji's Hare Krishna Prabhu. This Mataji's story reminds like recently, Shobara they met with like that. Oh, really? But but what I'm saying is like you say, Guru is like Krishna. Mm -hmm. You know that that day that played the miracle for her. You know she was dropping me in the temple and she was going back home in the Lincoln Road itself. She was a turning. She thought she will put the. She was going alone while coming. We both came. So she thought she was going alone. She wanted to play Prabhupada's lecture. Mm -hmm. And she just wanted to play it. And she doesn't want to play, does on the, do on the road. So she wanted to take turn left at the Lincoln Road and park the car and left side. And then she wanted to just put the tape and then come back to the road. Mm -hmm. So she was waiting at the left side, putting that signal, Somebody came and hit from the back. Mm. Left lane, he is, she's waiting. This throw, straight lane is there, but left lane, she's waiting. She wanted to put Prabhupada's tape. So then that car, somebody hit from the back and the car was total. And she was in the dry, driver's seat, you know, that whole back seat is came inside. The car has come inside. So they hit up to the front seat. Oh, really? <laughs> Tell me. Oh, heavy. Was total. So oh, that God. is Prabhupada like God. And he also saved her. See, because for she wanted to put the tape and she wanted to turn back and then park and then do that, come back to the road. She is correctly, she was doing everything. Mm. The car was totaled up to the driver's seat. The car was gone. Yeah. She just all in saved and she came back. Some that uh, tow truck guy dropped her in the temple, and Prabhu bought somebody's car and picked her up. Yeah, thank <laughs> you, thank you. That is uh, Guru, Guru, also. Yes, like, yes, he protects us. Guru and Krishna always comes and protects us. That was really something. Thank you very much, Prabhu. Thank you very much. Anyone else? He is any always problem? there protecting Krishna, is always there. So Okay, thank you, Mataji. Okay, Anyone else have any comment or question before we end our call for today? Okay, so thank you all for joining today morning. Have a wonderful, nice Krishna conscious day. So we'll continue tomorrow in the morning. Hare Krishna. Pancha Kalpatarupyascha Kripa Sindhu Pyevacha Patitanam Pavani Vaishnavibhyo Namon Namah Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.